whatever you want, guys. Okay, I'll, thank what I'll ask is uh, to clip at all. You can. Uh, oh, the oh yeah, the, the infamous. <laughs> I can't tell from the two things. So. Thank you. Anytime you want. So we're now joined by Atto Bolden, Olympic champion from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh god, Tobago? It's not right, is it? Oh, you oh said it right. <laughs> but I'm not Olympic champion. Yeah, so. okay. <laughs> Shut up, Joanna! <laughs> Shut up, Joanna! Everybody asked you, Joanna! Okay. Right. Let's go again. <laughs> so we're now joined by Atto Bolden, Olympic athlete from Trinidad and Tobago, and now a sports anchor for NBC. And we're here to find out about a career transition from being an athlete to being a reporter. So tell us how you made that break, how did you make the transition? What was the point at which you realized that was the career for you? Well, it, it happened for me while I was still in my actual competing, uh, competing life. Um, I, you know, I was the person who was always a little bit intrigued by the people that cover the sport and, and all the details that went into covering something as large as the World Championships or the Olympic Games. So I used to spend some time in the broadcast trucks just sort of milling around and uh, once I was retired, and got a chance to, you know, where a, a, a position opened up. They said, yeah, what about the kid that used to hang around here? And then that's, that's kind of how I got my first start. So that position, were you then just sort of waiting for some break? Were you waiting for other kind of work? Or did it come to you? Yeah, the, the work sort of came to me because it's, it's not an easy business to break into. And that's, that's the thing that I have to, to always tell people. You know, people say, oh, you know, I want to do what you do. How can I get started? And it's like, listen, that's a very, very long line and spots do not open up very often. Most people who you see that are in, in broadcasting, certainly at the level that I am, uh, they've been doing it for a while. And once they get in, they don't usually leave very soon after. So, um, yeah, I got extremely, I was extremely fortunate where I think my timing and when I came on the scene sort of coincided with, um, you know, the departure of some other people in the field. Mm. And did you feel like you were prepared for that environment? Did you have the skills? <laughs> did, did the interviews you did as an athlete help you get to that point? Or? I don't think anybody is ever really prepared to be a sports broadcaster, uh, and certainly not the job that I do, which is sports anal uh, analysis. Um, it's something where you pay attention, you shut up, you get your reps in, you try to learn from people who you think are doing it well, and hopefully if you're any good, in a couple of years, somebody says, you know what, that person's improved or that person deserves to be there because there's something very unnatural about a red light staring you in the face as a billion people watch on television. Yeah, and so time in front of the camera was the key way of you developing your skills, your personality, your voice in that environment. Yeah, time in front of the camera, um, you know, I, I mentioned reps just now. Mm -hmm. it, it really is about the reps. When I go back and look at what I sounded like and looked like, 10 years ago when I first got on the air, it doesn't look like what I look like now. I, I'm a little bit more comfortable in my own skin. You learn to sort of trust your own instincts because uh, I had a, a, a very good advice given to me um, by my old boss and he said, stop trying to be the TV version of yourself and it's what everybody does when they get on television for the first time. So, well, so, and it, it comes off unnatural and everybody at home reads that sort of you know, it's, it's a very artificial look and I had to trust in, you know what, say it the way you, you know, say it the way you feel it, be honest in your analysis, have fun. This is not, you're not, you know, you know you're, this is not rocket science. You're actually trying to have people um, enjoy what it is they're seeing and, uh, and that worked for me. And over the 10 years, have you had different roles? Has it been a similar role throughout that period? Have you moved from one thing to another? Yeah, it's, it's been mostly similar. Um, they tend to keep me mostly in the booth where my job is to analyze what I'm seeing, specifically in the sprints. But I actually have been uh, rewarded for doing well in the booth, actually, by being allowed to go down and do some post-race uh, interviews at the World Championships, which I thoroughly enjoy because it's a very clinical atmosphere in the booth. I have to know times and dates and names and occasions. And when you go down and interview somebody who is, you know, who has just completed a race or who has just won the Olympic Games or the World Championships, you have to ad lib, you have to be relevant, and you have to go with the flow because you may say something to me and I have to be paying attention and maybe ask you a follow-up if it's something that's very significant. So I enjoy both roles, but they have kept me mostly in the booth, even though um, I have been allowed to go down and, and inter interview some people with trackside. And do you feel like you're on a career path? Is it you see where this is going next? Do you feel like you have 
the skills now to have currency, to have longevity in this career? Well, I've actually been invited to do um, several things which are not specifically sports related and that was always my plan. Mm -hmm. I love sports but I feel like if you're a good broadcaster you should be able to be a good broadcaster at anything. So um, I have used my platform with people seeing me on television during the Olympics and, and, and a very big audience in this country to be able to use that to get in the door to do other things. I haven't really quite found what I specifically want to do at the next uh, in the next phase of my broadcasting career but I feel like I will always do sports even if I do something mm -hmm. else that's not sports related. So in terms of advice for an athlete that's still competing if they want to go down this career path given how competitive it is given how difficult it is to get into the business what kind of advice would you have for them? My advice to athletes who are st still competing mm -hmm. and want to do this after is to Sort of humble yourself and see what connections you can make that will get you in a door. For example, when I was thinking about possibly doing this as a career when I was done, I would be the guy who, as I said, I'd go sit in the broadcast truck and go talk to the producer and say, listen, I'm not running at this meet, but I would love to see how you guys put on a meet. People remember that. Everybody's, people are always excited to share with you what they do for a living. When you show an interest in what people do for a living, it helps you down the road. So maybe it is that you know you don't want to be in front of the camera. Maybe you want to produce television when you're done. Maybe you want to direct television. There are other jobs besides in front of the camera. To those athletes, I would say, start now while your name means something. If Usain Bolt came to NBC now and said, you know what, I want to do something in this field when we're done, we find a spot for him in the truck. Because for us, for everybody in the truck, it's like, oh my gosh, Usain Bolt's here. But you don't have to be Usain Bolt. The reality is, if you show an interest in the profession, chances are, so everybody got a break from somebody else. Mm -hmm. So chances are somebody will, will take the opportunity and, and, and extend a hand to you. So it's really about realizing what opportunities are around athletes whilst they're competing, which industries are there, which doors could be open if they spend some of their time at the meet just exploring a bit more. A lot of the times, athletes and people in general assume things that just aren't so. Oh, I can't go ask them that because that's not allowed, or they'll or they'll say no. Well, guess what? You'll never know if you don't ask. And so many of so you know, I, I'm a little bit brazen, <laughs> some may say, but so much of what I've achieved in life is because I wasn't afraid to be told no. You know what? I'm gonna go ask, and maybe I'll ask ten different people, and nine of them may say no. And then that one person says yes, guess what? I'm in, I close the door behind me. <laughs> Thanks very much. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you.